Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the rate information options common to all rate types in Cloud PM. To access rate codes, open Cloud PM's GM Functions module, expand the Room and Rates header, and select Rate Code Maintenance. That opens the Rate Search page. From here, we can retrieve all of our existing rate codes by clicking Search, find a specific type of rate code by using this filter, or look for a particular code by filling in any of these search options. I'm creating a new rate code, so I'll start by clicking the green plus sign on the toolbar. Configuring a rate involves a lot of choices, and the first one is, what kind of rate are we creating? Plan rates are rates that the hotel has defined a specific value for each day and for a given time frame or season. Rack, government, and many contracted rates fall into this category. The other major rate type is dynamic, which are rates based off of other rates. Some examples are Auto Club, Senior, and any other rate that is a discount from Rack. For now, I'll stick with the first option, but this video applies to all rate types. Now we're on the Rate Information page, where I can enter the rate code and a description. Next, I'll select the appropriate market segment from this drop-down list. I'll also need to specify which accounting code this rate will post to. Some hotels post room revenue to multiple accounting codes. For example, an extended stay property might post short-term stays against one account, taxable extended stays to another, and non-taxable extended stays to a third code. In our sample hotels case, RM is used for all room revenue. The last field required is currency, and it'll already be filled in with your hotel's default currency. Now let's take a look at the various options. Marking this checkbox will make the rate confidential. This is an opaque net rate, so I'll enable this to hide the rate amount from guests. This box will inactivate the rate code, which I don't want to do, so I'll leave it unchecked. These four radio buttons determine whether a rate is commissionable or not, and if the commission is a percentage or a fixed amount. This example is a net rate, so I'll select non-commissionable. These two fields allow you to set a minimum and or maximum nights allowable for this rate. Our agreement with this OTA includes a five-night maximum, so I'll enter that here. If your hotel uses the rate quoter, be aware that this limit will not appear under the booking rules column, which means your reservationists won't know there's a restriction. You'll need to add the five-night maximum separately under booking rules for this to show up. If desired, we can control the order that rate codes appear in the drop-down menus by moving our code up or down this list. Our sample hotel lists rack first, then everything else in alphabetical order. The last option on the rate info page, if your hotel has it enabled, is setting up rate tiers. This is a type of automated rate yielding that increases or decreases a rate based on the hotel's occupancy. Not all hotels use this option, and there's a lot you can do with it, so we'll cover rate tiers in a separate video. By the way, rate tiering is not available on dynamic rates. A dynamic rate will simply follow whatever tier is in effect on the base rate. Now let's take a look at the ribbon bar. As usual, we can save or cancel our changes, or refresh the page here in the Actions section. In fact, I'll save this now. We can also start a completely new rate code by clicking the plus sign, or copy this information to a new code. There's also a Tax Exemptions button if all reservations for this rate are to be tax exempt. Just select the appropriate taxes from this list, and click OK. For plan rates, the next steps are to add seasons and to enter the rates for each room type. Dynamic rates do not require seasons or rate entries, since that information comes over from the base rate. 
These steps are covered in separate videos for day of week, day of stay, extended stay, and dynamic rates. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. Please feel free to contact your account manager or our customer support center for additional questions.